The Hytale trailer just hit 60 million views, but the game has come a long way since 2018, so I want to update you all on where it's at now and the current state of Hytale. Because even though many people on Reddit and in my comment section think the game is dead or even fake, developer Hypixel Studios have actually been much more communicative recently, opening up on Twitter and even appearing in several interviews, the COO Sean McCafferty on the channel Willcast being asked about a release date, and Budacat discussing the development and life of the team, along with revealing a new concept image during the Thankmas charity event last December. This will likely just continue to happen more often now as we approach 2024 and push closer to the launch. Recently, there was an actual leak from a Hytale employee on Twitter, and this is some pretty big news, confirming a feature of the game that players have long suspected. We see a poster along with stickers, as well as a Hytale postcard that I and others received for Christmas. The poster for Hytale World terminology, however, is the big point of interest here. It seems almost impossible to read, but luckily our community is incredible, and user Willchill created a less warped transcribed version, which user El Nido Skarik also redesigned as a graphic. I've got ahead and overlaid the English translations and linked the original post below for you to see for yourselves. Prepare for some technical terms, but I will try to simplify. Firstly, we see that all things within Hytale exist within the universe. The universe is made up of a collection of all Hytale worlds known to the client and game server. Each of these worlds contains its very own playable area which is fully explorable without the need to transition through portals. A world is then divided into chunks, one chunk being a single area of 32 by 32 by 32 voxels. All those chunks combine to form a kind of 3D space called the chunk grid. Chunks are also not just stacked sideways in the Z and X axis of the grid, but also upwards in the Y axis, creating columns. This is very unlike Minecraft's chunks, which are 16 by 16 horizontally and actually make up the entire world height on the Y axis. Hytale's columns, however, can each be divided into individual chunks. We know this better in the community as cubic chunks, and the way that they stack allows for much better load times, enabling world height to be increased significantly. In fact, based on some observations we made way back in an older video, I actually theorized that this could be the case. Chunks are then further split up into voxels or blocks. These are single cells that all form a voxel grid. However, the appearance of the voxel is not necessarily constrained to the area of the cell. For example, a voxel could either be a cube, which fills the entire voxel, for example, dirt or stone, stairs, which are similar, but with a quarter cut out, a slab, which is obviously half of a voxel, and other is likely any block considered not to fall under the other categories, such as fences and roof blocks, for instance. As mentioned, all of these voxels come together on a voxel grid, which assigns integers in all three coordinate directions to the position of each block in the world, similar to Minecraft, but slightly different. That's massive news for us in terms of tech, but speaking of, how is all of that stuff going? For anyone who still isn't aware, I'll say it now. Hytale will be coming to console and mobile. In fact, the major issue people have had with the team, the big point of contention in the last year, has been in relation to their redevelopment efforts, rebuilding in order to support these additional platforms. When we last left them, the team had undertaken far-reaching technical investigations as they evolved the vision for Hytale. This was in order to ensure that the game lasts for a long time and the community remains healthy in the years to come. No longer are jobs listed for Java and C-sharp coding languages. Instead, opting to redevelop the engine's client and server in C++ in order to efficiently release across multiple platforms, both console and mobile, without dividing the community. This also allows them to produce higher performance and make the game far easier to patch and update after release. This may not seem like a big deal to some, but obviously Minecraft community members and mod makers alike who are more focused in the other languages may be a bit concerned. The team, however, ensures us that this is the right choice. Remember that the goal for Hytale is essentially to be easy to play anywhere with anyone. Mods that work for all devices, etc. And for those who say, why bother? Consider this, the original engine that they were working on was developed far earlier, way before much of the hype and resources the team had come to know. They realized this and took the hit now, delaying the game further in order to avoid huge delays with future updates, a split player base, and scaling issues once the game releases. They're trying to avoid what happened with Minecraft Bedrock Edition. In a world filled with crunch and overworking, we really should be thankful that the team have the time that they need and the stakeholders are patient. Many games that you know today for being disasters on launch suffered due to the exact opposite. They realized their issues but had no time to do anything about them. It has of course been a lot of work, but necessary work to ensure that the launch is as accessible and as unified as possible. 
Now, with all that said, plenty of talented developers and creatives have been hired in the last year, with new job roles appearing, more and more hinting at player research and expanding on Hytale beyond launch. The player insight position will be identifying player needs and researching player behavior, whereas the Hytale online producer will leverage player data and market research. The point is that they're not just hiring for a small time gig. To be a part of the team now is a commitment and they want people who are devoted in for the long haul. What gives me even more hope that something is coming soon, potentially significant reveals, footage, or even a new trailer, is that Hypixel appeared at the Global Riot Conference. This is an event for teams to showcase upcoming games and projects. Riot Games of course acquired the studio back in 2020 and have been funding development ever since. With that being the case, the team were invited to showcase some of their plans for Hytale and its future along with all the other studios that are under the Riot Games umbrella. At least one can assume, because this was clearly a meaningful and big event for the team too, as they even marked it for their annual company coin of 2022. I mean, who knows what they would have shown, but if I was presenting to a huge room of all my colleagues and peers, I'd want to make sure I impress them. In that instance, however, they may have shown a lot like a lot, a lot. Reveal things that they may want to hold back from the public until much later. Either way, we know now that the team's vision for the game isn't just wishy-washy. There's no backstepping or rebuilding at this point. They've done that a number of times now. They've stated that it has gone well and that they're well on their way in terms of progress, now showcasing to the Greater Riot ecosystem. There are now three official doorways that are set in stone for how you can experience Hytale. Number one is creative, where you can create custom procedurally generated worlds experiencing them as an adventurer, creator, or quote, something in between. Here you can install mods or use the wide range of blocks and styles to change the look and feel of the game. This is where builders, world designers, coders, musicians, modelers, and animators can truly reign supreme. Working and collaborating at entry level all the way up to pro to create their own unique experiences. The second doorway is social, the game's first party online component. This is kind of like Hypixel's Minecraft server, social play and and mini games for you to experience with friends. You can show off achievements and compete. We've seen this server multiple times over the years, and it will likely include many mini games made popular by Hypixel themselves. And number three, the campaign or official RPG experience, the Orbis Adventure. This is where you are tasked with saving a specific world in peril by uncovering its secrets. While Creative allows players to generate custom worlds, Orbis is a specifically curated experience, crafted carefully to add more challenge and story for players to follow. It still randomizes a lot of the things in the world, however, in order to create a diverse and interesting range of experiences for every player. These three doorways are not going to be separate though. The team have ensured that during redevelopment that they've united them. You will see your adventure achievements throughout social, be able to bring friends from social into your adventure world, and even display creative builds in social servers. Connecting to this, we're finally provided some lore mixed with an explainer for our character. What you play and control in Hytale is actually a powerful creative being known as an avatar. No, not that one. N no. Not that one. Yes, these ones that you've seen everywhere on the website. They focus raw energy in order to shape worlds that express themselves. Each of the three doorways reflect a different aspect of the avatar's lives. In fact, where they are actually dictates how strong their power is, a nice narrative way of explaining how players are in most control when they create their own world. Power is unbound and customization options are not limited. They can fly around and be a god or set boundaries for themselves if they wish. Shared social environments like the Hypixel server will moderate player power, however, in an effort to help them all play new experiences equally. When avatars visit each other's worlds, they only have the power they're granted by the host or owner, who may grant players differing levels of permissions if they choose. And we're told that for adventures specifically, Orbis is a world which has mysteriously lost its avatar, the person we've come to know as Gaia. Unfortunately, it seems Gaia left all her perms turned off, so we're basically level one powerless noobs here. Sub to mortal limitations. Here, we have to develop practical and survival skills to survive, establish our presence, and uncover the world's many secrets. It's great to look back at all our old theories of who Gaia was and what was happening to Orbis at the time. I'm happy that they've included this tidbit as a way of explaining in-universe who we are and how that connects across all game modes. Congratulations again to the team for officially hitting 60 million views. We've been waiting on this one a while. And that's officially it in terms of Hytale so far. I'll continue to cover news here, so consider to subscribing, continue smiling, and thanks as always for watching Quebec Corner. Stay safe and keep free.